Backs played there, it's effective. Doesn't Tal Hoffer have um, teach you how to fight even though when you haven't got a weapon? Right, basically, a lot of the systems are the same. Whether you're using no weapon, your dagger, sword, or poleaxe, they'll all use the similar sorts of moves. And there's sort of wrestling and so on. And a lot of it is the same as martial arts in other countries as well. So if you were to come at me with a dagger, yeah, yeah like that, you come to stab, come offline and stab the elbow. Right, and you'll see that in judo. Have you ever done in judo? No. No? In judo, there's a move where you grab your opponent. Yeah. Right, you grab them. So, and then you'll take them over your hip. Yeah. Like that, boom, straight yeah. over. Okay. Right hip throw. In the 15th century, British soldiers were well known for using that on the battlefield. Yeah. Right, they also preferred the leg sweep. So you come in and you just kick your opponent's feet out from underneath them. Nice. So on the floor, and once they're on the floor, you can stab them. Nice. Right? Is That's that, 15th century. Do you know that bluish, greyish? Thing by the dagger. Is that a hand cannon? That's a hand gun, yeah. Good one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A hack butt or a book butt. Yeah. Right? You look like it can do that. Yeah. Right, so there's my powder horn. Nice. And have that on my belt. So you start off. At the top of the powder horn, and you pour in. You then take your match. Now, your match is hemp rope, it's mm. been soaked in saltpeter, mm. right? Potassium nitrate, I think, and that will make it burn well. But you don't want it to burn too fast, so you then soak it in. Water. Uh, Urine. Mm. Oh, nice. You could soak it in wine, you could soak it in vinegar. But wine and vinegar cost money. Wee's for free. <laughs> and the smell of the gunpowder burning, you're probably not going to worry about it. Okay? So you blow your match. Now, in some illustrations, they've got an angular piece. And they reckon that they've got wire that they're heated up in a brazier, so it's quite hot. But reenactors who've tried it find it very difficult to get it into the hole while it's still hot enough to ignite. Mm. So they're not sure whether it's artistic license. But if you're in a castle shooting over the walls, you might have a brazier there. In the battlefield, you're not going to carry a brazier around with you. So you've got your lighted match, you spin it around and blow on it, you point it in the direction of the person you want to shoot at. <laughs> it's not got any sights on it. <laughs> Okay, so you hold it over, you turn away, and touch hope, down, hope for the best, and hope that things can blow up and kill you. Yeah. So right? what's the opposition to all the time you're doing this? Well, basically, you'll if you're in a castle and they're besieging, they're going to be outside. On the battlefield, you'll be coming from behind other blocks of troops to shoot. You've got a couple of hundred yards range at most. How many rounds a minute do you think you'll be able to shoot? Uh, one, two-ish. One or two a minute? Yeah. One every four minutes. Because if there's still powder burning in there, if I take the powder flask and put another charge of powder in, that's going to ignite. It's going to ignite the powder in the flask, and I'm not going to have a hand left. Okay, so we have to wait for the powder to stop burning, so it's one every four minutes. Why would you use this? Um, it's got less range than a bow, it's less accurate than a bow, it shoots a heck of a lot slower than a bow, so why would you use it? Because it's new, modern and it, and it scares people. <laughs> and it's probably it's scary. deadly. It's good against armour, but the main difference is you can teach any monkey to use it, mm. and uh, they good. are cheap. Really? That is cheap? That is cheap, compared to a crossbow. Uh, and it's not as cheap as a war bow. But remember, we're getting our war bows from the continent. Uh. People buying wine in Italy had to bring staves of wood as part of the tax to the crown. Uh. 
to make bows from because you in this country grows too variably. What you want is mountain grown you where it grows very, very slowly. You go to Italy or certain parts of East Europe or certain parts of Spain, a yew tree that is that size will be the same age as a yew tree in this country that is that size. You can make bows out of English yew. Nowadays, most of the yew we use to make our bows come from America, Oregon. But decent yew wood is very difficult to get in this country. And is this, is this a holding spike or is it... That hooks over the wall to take the recoil. Oh. Right? Could you, could you, if you needed to, use Hit it? Hit somebody with it. Yeah, use yeah it you could use it for that. They're getting close. Now... Why is the hook on the... Oh, hold to it. hold it. Yeah, mm. of course. Like a spade grip on a machine gun. Mm. 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 Yeah. This, this string got went spiked. That's a Yeah, that's called a putty tag or a plastic. It's a Flemish weapon in 1305 at the Battle of Full mm. The French were attacking the Flemish and they used long spears. Now, Going back to the handgun, the weapons we use are built like that. They've got mm. short staves. Mm. On the continent, where they're using more handguns rather than bows, they do use bows and crossbows, but they have more handguns, they use long spears called pikes yeah. because they need to stop horses. Our bow fire, our bow shooting, stops the horses. Okay? Mm. On the continent, yeah, on the continent, they have long spears. If I tried to stop a horse with a bill, it would stop the horse. But a horse moving at 25 miles an hour that weighs a ton, the laws of physics say it's not going to stop straight away. It may be dead or dying, but it's still going to land on top of me. So we use archers to stop the horses on the continent because they can only shoot once at the horse with a crossbow or a gun. We can shoot four times with a bow and arrow. They can only shoot once, so they use long spears to stop the horses. Now, that's what the Flemish did against the French. They used the long spears to kill the horses, Ooh, and then they used that to smash the helmets of the French knights in. And because the French knights were wearing mail, not plated armour, that will go through the mail. So once you've got the knight on the ground, yeah. straight through his chest, Ooh. dead. It's said they collected 500 pairs of gilt spurs. Spurs covered with a thin layer of gold, and they put them on display in a cathedral. 79 years later, the French came back, beat the Flemish, and took all the spurs away again. <laughs> right? By our period in the 15th century, this is more of a civilian weapon. Right? The sort of thing that you might carry around to bash your neighbour's head in if you get too fussy. <laughs> You're going to be good. <laughs> Get too close to things, just point from distance, please. That one or that one? That one. Okay. This is a flail. It is for preparing wheat. Yeah. So you cut your wheat with your sickle or scythe, probably more a sickle than a scythe. You put it into nice bunches in the field to dry out. When it's dried out, you've taken some of the stalks away and you've woven them together either into fans or into dolls, and that is your corn that you save for next year to plant. The rest of it you'll put on the floor, and you hit. And as you whack it, it separates the grains out, and you can take those grains to the mill to be ground into flour. Why don't you grind them into flour at home? Because you don't have a, you don't have a mill. You can have grinding stones for hundreds of years. People had quern stones, or just you just need two pieces of stone to rub them together. But it's against the law. Why? Because you're not paying tax. Anymore. Because you have to pay tax for the local lord and for the church. Tenth of you to the church. Do you know Bar Bar Black Sheep? Yes. Right. How does that go? Bar Bar Black Sheep. Have you any rules? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. One for the master, one for the dame, and one for the boy that lives down the lane. Right, the dame is the church, so you make three bags of wool. One goes to the lord, the master, one goes to the church, right? 
for most of your work is paid in tax to different people. You lucky people. <laughs> now, somebody's coming to steal the bit you've got left, right? You've only got, well, why don't you call the police? Because there ain't any. There are no police. <laughs> and you haven't got a telephone because they've not been invented either. No. Now, by law, every man carries a dagger. It's the law that you carry a dagger, okay, to defend yourself. Right, but against somebody on horseback with a spear or a sword, you want something better than a dagger, okay? So you could take your flail, and rather than separating the cork grains from the wheat, you, you could separate the, the skull from the brain. Yes. Okay, if you go onto YouTube, you'll see in Eastern Europe, farmers are still using these in competitions, and they can get up hundreds of beats per minute. They're really, really, really fast. Now, if somebody's wearing armour and a helmet, is it going to be particularly effective? No. So how could you make it more effective? By using the You've got lucky hand now. <laughs> yeah, if you hit with the side, it comes over like that, rather than like that. So how could you make it more effective? Um, swing down on them. Yeah, make but it you've a got a helmet. Better. You could make it heavier. You could hammer some nails through it. Oh, yeah. a bit like you could get a bit like that, but you could get the blacksmith to put some metal bands around it. Okay, hold the wood together, make it heavier. Okay, if you keep on doing that, what you'll end up with is this. <laughs> that is this, which is a footman's flail. Now. This one is at the big end, a lot of them were smaller, okay, because this one's so heavy, really a footman's flail should only have two rings, much easier to control, but because once you've brought it down, your opponents are going to rush in, because you've got to get it back up to hit them again, they put a spear point on the end so you can hold them off, because they put a spear point on the end, they've had to increase the length of the chain so that it doesn't foul on the spear point. I've hit a helmet with this, you can actually see that was the one that hit. It bent slightly. When it hit the helmet, there wasn't a head inside the house to add, it punched straight through and ripped the weld on the top of the helmet apart. This is a very effective weapon against armour, but it is slow. When you are standing there going like that, getting ready to strike, somebody with a bill or a spear is just going to stab you straight through the armpit into your heart and kill you. So you want to fight with this from behind defences. In the 15th century and 1450s, the Hussites, Bohemians, fighting against the German crusaders had been sent against them because they were deemed heretics. And if you're a heretic and you've got crusades against you, then they're going to kill men, women and children. Right? So women and men went out to fight. They got wagons, put the wagons around in the camp, put some cannon there, they had hand gunners, they had crossbowmen, and they had people with big rocks, big boxes of rocks to chuck, because handguns and crossbows are expensive, rocks are free. And in between where there were gaps, they had people armed with these. And as the Crusaders tried to climb over, they just flicked them over the top and smashed people's heads. Okay? The men and women fighting with these. I don't know, would you be able to fight with one of these? I need two hands. It's got a bit of weight to it, hasn't it? What's that called the unusual prong? Yeah. Virtually all our weapons come from farming implements. And that's... Uh, right, now if you have been harvesting with your size, you'll have collected your hay to feed your animals over the winter. Now this isn't a pitchfork. What's the difference between this and a pitchfork? A pitchfork's a lot more pointed. Well, yeah, this is a blunt training one. We've got training weapons which are blunt and heavy because Vegetius, the Roman author, tells us that the Roman army used blunted, heavy weapons to train with. One, because they hurt but don't kill. So recruits will learn to move faster and parry harder. Two, they build up muscle and stamina so that when you fight with the real weapons, they're lighter and you can fight for longer and harder. Okay, so this is a blunt training one. What's the difference between a pitchfork? A bit longer. No. These are curved. Right, because when you're collecting your hay to put it up in the loft store, you hook it round like that, you lift it up, and then you turn it over, and the prongs are now that way, so the hay will come up into the loft. 
If you did it with this, you pick it up, and now the hay has been pushed onto the fork, so you'd have to try and shove it up like that. It's not as effective. However, curved prongs oh, yeah. aren't going to go in very well. So these have been hammered straight. This now gives you a fairly light spear, but with two spear points. You can also trap your opponent's weapons, or trap their arms and break them. Mm. When I fight with this on the battle, because I do like fighting with this one, you get your opponent's shafts, push them down and ram them into your opponent's legs. Yes. And inside, or you can get a couple of weapons and hold them, so the people facing them can stab through. Also, if you're fighting somebody in tin, it actually holds against their chest very well. Whereas a single point will slide off. Yeah. These will keep the person trapped and hold them at a distance while other people hit them. Wow. It's a peasant weapon, mm. but coming through into the 18th century, you will still find military forks, but with decoration. They will have fluting, they will have scroll work, because it is an effective weapon. Right, folks, there is a fighting display now. We're going to be here for the rest of the day. So if you want to know anything more about these weapons, you are more than welcome to come back, but you may not see that display till later. Thank you very so, much. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, they're they're modern they're made by modern day blacksmiths, but they are the same steel that they would have used. Yeah, yeah, no, they're not five hundred years old now. But we use these when we do battle as well. So maybe good to take part in combat. Mm. So the steel is the same sort of steel because it needs to be able to take the hits and knocks from a combat. Rowan, can you say a bit? Rowan? If a little light. Um, so it's a People have different preferences. So a light sword is um, much okay. quicker to fight with. So it's much more uh, faster to fight with. Can we try an axe? It's a bit lighter, you might like that. Yeah. <laughs> you like the axe, do you? Oh yeah. We have an axe and a shield. We've got some more skills. Let's put the buckle on the way one. Morning star. Axe of shield is what you have. There you want to see? About the right size shield for you, I think. <laughs> Covers him nicely. To be fair, like, that dent's probably made for the axes. Yeah, well, all these marks, we don't put them in there for sure, they're from oh. combat. So, <laughs> they're all authentic. Uh, we have enough cuts and bruises, bruises to prove that. <laughs> what causes, how do you blue the steel? Does that just prevent corrosion? No, no, it's um, just a design choice. You can do it with open flames. Um, it takes that's right. an awful lot of practice. Um, it's your blue um, steel helmet. Oh, yeah. In the eye. Mm -hmm. exactly. We're probably going to give more information about how they blew it. I think it's just because it's not treated as much or something. I know they do it through flames. Is it a design or is it a design? Yeah, just because it was boring to buy the silver one, right? Uh, Lisa, do you know it's yours? You can tell them right Yeah, exactly. If everyone buys the same kit as well, you've got to have something to distinguish. No, no, I'm going to catch up, I'm certain. It's normally put your name inside. There'd be no electro welding in, in the medieval times. Oh, right, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at the outside. Yeah. It's fine. It looks good when it's on my head. It's the outside that counts. <laughs> what? Oh, sorry, yeah, I left them. There's a guy in that group. Very uncomfortable, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, it usually has yeah, like a kind of really padded thing on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. That's, no, I wear that all the time, so yeah. I'm not going to hand it to so you with a big sweaty no, yeah. going on uh, like that, that, The white thing at the back there, like a coif, yeah. a padded coif, to obviously oh, absorb the impact. Although the weapons aren't sharp, they are the same weight and.